Oh, it's been ages since I played this. Oh, br wait. Can, can you hear that? What is that? Oh, please. Please don't tell me. Oh my god! When I was a boy, Imperial walls and towers used to make me feel so safe. I've been playing this game for about 15 seconds. So Bethesda in characteristic grace and glory opens its fucking VR game, moving you perpendicular to the way you're facing without you being able to control it. If there was a Bible on things not to do in VR games, top of the list written in Nazim's fucking blood would be moving the character player without them having any control. Do you get to the cloud district very often? Oh, what am I saying? Of course you don't. I take it all back! 10 out of 10! Best game! So of course they left in this absolute mind fuck as well. No, 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 merciful god in heaven! Sorry, did I mention Bethesda gave me this game for free as a review copy? I mean, did they not watch any of my fucking videos? I have to say I was very excited to do this video. It means I get to include a lot of really beautiful shots of nice countryside and cool areas as I talk about the game, and that catapults us directly into the point of this video. 50 seconds in and I'm already there. It's almost as if I haven't got anything else to talk about. The runs were said run! Khajiit is ready for any troublemakers. Fallout 4 VR may be fun time shooty things game, but it's not really that pleasant to hang out in. Sometimes it does look quite nice, but the bulk of the game of blown up city is not the most inspiring of places to spend your time. Granted it's supposed to look like shit, but that doesn't really change things. If I wanted to hang out in a crappy house, I'd just come round to yours for dinner. Skyrim is the total opposite of this in that every location is just so fucking stunning. <laughs> I've always had a bit of a pet peeve about the mossy areas as the lack of landscape here reveals the game's ghastly draw distance, but beyond this it's honestly a bit of a dream. But, can we go deeper? I'm, uh, I'm talking about mods. Look, modding Skyrim is like redecorating your house. You could get new windows put in, or you could replace every brick with the same brick that has slightly higher texture resolutions and parallax effects until the furniture won't render. <laughs> Like this. Whilst of course giving everything else tits. Hey! So I mean you could add more grass to the game or even give the kajits tits. Hey Sid, I got you that new milk that you like. What is happening in here? But in the long run, slightly improved graphics at the cost of a lower frame rate are not going to make the game any more fun. However, there are some mods that do substantially improve Skyrim VR and I almost consider it not worth playing without them. So I feel we should get you to where I am before we actually review the game. Honestly, the characters in Fallout 4 and Skyrim look like Bethesda hired fucking Leatherface to design their skins. I mean, look at this guy! Oh, that's better. I mean, this mod takes five seconds to install, has little to no impact on performance, and I honestly consider the game practically worthless without it. Why is it up to me to fix this? It's 2018 and I didn't pay $60 to do this myself! I mean, I didn't pay anything because I got the game for free. Fuck! These two change the entire game. They add light sources and more detailed shadows to the game so may affect performance, but this time it's worth it. Just look how much better the game looks with them. And what it means is, in many areas you have to carry a torch, because contrary to Bethesda's view of the world, you can't fucking see at night. Using these mods and then coming back to the game without them is so weird because you find dungeons that have laid untouched for centuries, but they're as bright as a shitty Will Smith movie. So this mod forces you to trade off between being able to see or being able to fight with both hands. It adds variety to the game that makes sense in the context of the world, and as a result makes the game so much more immersive, it's honestly unbelievable. Exploring dungeons becomes precarious, anything could be around any corner ready to jump out and surprise you. Assorted books. It meant that finding the candlelight spell in a dungeon somewhere became a substantial and exciting event. Making a game more challenging and immersive is what makes general exploration more exciting. And that's the bulk of this game. So it's a shame I had to fix it myself, isn't it? I tell you, installing the Static Mesh Improvement mod that specifically asks you what version of the game you're playing is like appearing on an episode of fucking Jeopardy! Skyrim Special Edition, Legendary Edition, Plane Edition, Switch Edition, Watch Edition, The Audition Edition, Cheesecake Edition... But it works! It literally fucking works a treat! This mod changes so much within the game world and it makes all the difference to giving the game a more modern feel. And it runs as smooth as butter! Now this leads me to the conclusion that... Come here. Closer. No, closer. Boosh! But Bethesda didn't actually change much of anything about this game. I mean, obviously they added interactive menus and of course the 3D weapon support. I'm so immersed. But I've managed to get Zelda The Wind Waker working in VR, which was originally made over a decade ago for the cube game. And that worked perfectly fine. Oh Jesus, oh my God. In a game where you are in the game where the sounds come from, where the sounds come from is exceptionally important. 
Plus. This mod fixes all of the sound issues within Skyrim, has no effect on performance, takes less than two seconds to download, and allows the game to compete with other similar modern games. What the fuck are these people doing? To give you an example of how well this mod works, earlier I was in a dungeon, and then suddenly I heard a rumbling directly behind me, moving closer. I dived to the side as a stream of boulders rolled past me. I knew they were coming, and I knew exactly where they were. Here is the same event without the mod. Wait, what the fuck is that noise? Oh, ow! I played games ever since I could use a keyboard, and from a very young age, due to what can only be described as very poor parenting, somehow got my hands on PC copies of Dungeon Keeper, Legacy of Cain Blood Omen, rupturing organs till the pressure inside bursts the sack of fleshy skin, spraying its and Abe's Odyssey. People say the level of violence on video games. Which generally reveals how I matured to be such a well-rounded person. Fuck. You. <laughs> I am God! You see, when you're very young, you have this innate ability to put yourself into a video game and experience it at a very personal level. I really don't think I should be here. And as you get older, you tend to lose this a little, and it kind of gets more difficult to experience games in the same way. Most VR games are really immersive, but none have managed to properly capture the sense of wonder you get from being part of a vast expanding world you can get lost in. Skyrim so closely emulates the style of these older games that I loved, and I have found playing it in VR immediately gives me that sense of wonder and excitement of being lost in a fantasy world. It makes me feel like a kid again, and it's fucking glorious. There is a really fun VR game called Waltz of the Wizard with a similar Aesthetic. But when I tried to travel outside, I was greeted with a medieval recreation of Event Horizon. Fuck off! If you use the mods I suggested, I would say that Skyrim is probably the most beautiful video game ever made. <laughs> Look, I know The Witcher 3 has better gameplay, story, characters. Law, DLC, immersion, writing, AI, performance, endgame, leveling, cities, dungeons, enemies, weapons, and so on. But I think Skyrim has better visual design and full damage. On paper, The Witcher 3 looks much better than Skyrim. This was such a waste of ink. But I find The Witcher 3's general style too clean, too close to reality for it to evoke a proper sense of wonder. It's the greatest game ever made, that's for sure. But that's... Look, fine, take a look at this and make up your own damn minds. The point of all that was to show you that Skyrim has much more of a fantasy feel, even though the graphics of The Witcher 3 are technically better. But the thing is, The Witcher 3 is so much like real life, and if I wanted to experience real life, I would just go outside. So my friend Sam, he has a vibe and has never actually played Skyrim. I can only imagine what torturous experiments Todd Howard would perform to determine how this demographic of hasn't played Skyrim actually still exists today. Makes him a little less sexy now. So it occurs to me that he has the golden ticket. Finally, a huge new VR game to play based on a game that was originally really good. Because the original Skyrim's a good game, isn't it? I mean, it has to be, it has skeletons in it. But even without all that, it's still a good game. I mean, yeah, I'd 
giant cats in it too. Coochie, coochie, coochie. Ah! Look, I'm finally gaining followers. I can't say this game isn't great. I'll be casting them to the wind like so many cartridges of Skyrim for the fucking Switch. Look, to put it simply, Skyrim has many of the problems Fallout 4 has in that there are many locations that have very little notable story aspects to them and the game world is filled with so many two-dimensional characters and stories that don't go anywhere substantial. I have no idea. I don't know. That's very odd. I have no idea what to do. Why, that doesn't make any sense at all. No, what's going on? Well, I shall be here for advice, should you need me. It's like reading Game of Thrones, but instead it's written by J.K. Rowling. Oh, shit! As a result, it's more difficult to fully soak yourself in the brilliant visual and audible aesthetic of the game, because there is this slight disconnect between us and the characters we meet. But... But... That's why we love this game. Because at times it's so impersonal, so straightforward. It ends up being so chill to the point you're gonna fall into a fucking coma. Look, sometimes when you finish work, you just wanna switch off, not think. You wanna get lost in an uncomplicated universe. New Vegas is the basic opposite of Skyrim for being so deep, dropping you into a story of blurred morality where you explore the intricacies of the darkness of the human soul through the medium of relatable character dramas. And yes, Skyrim doesn't even come close to that. But we do get something else, something not quite as exciting, but still something beautiful. It's more shallow but to swim in the fountain of life, the water must first go up to your knees. The bottom line I'm trying to make here is that Skyrim itself isn't perfect, nor is it as engaging or complex as it could be for what it is. But the original appeal I found in it for being a game you could relax and explore dungeons and enjoy the sights of this beautiful game world are only amplified and improved by it being in VR. And honestly, I can't stop playing it. I'm hungry. Okay, the video is getting a bit long, so we're going to do a quick fire round reviewing the more relevant VR aspects of the game. Go! VR games eat processing power like they're fucking Mars bars. <laughs> yeah, Skyrim VR runs like liquid gold, but so it fucking should. My five-year-old laptop plays this game, my calculator gets me to white run, and I'm sure if I inserted the game disc into a cheesecake, it would at least boot the loading screen. So we'll put that in there. And so it's in. And we'll wait for it. Yep. Skyrim. The sword fighting only uses basic collision detection, so melee combat has all the complexity of a wooden spoon. It's just the wave arms till the object falls down style of combat, and unlike Fallout 4, you can't remove limbs, so it's rendered entirely useless. And using swords when the infinite power of the universe is available to you is like riding your bike across London when you have a teleporter, the basic power of flight, and three helicopters. The magic is utterly sublime, and you can now even kill enemies either side of you at the same time, because you can move your hands independently from each other, and it's the fucking best! <laughs> Yeah. The horse riding is a piece of absolute fried gold. Go, go, gadget, horse dick. When using bows, you can't use your right hand to alter the direction in which you fire arrows in the most baffling design choice of the decade, as all other VR games allow you to do this. But honestly, you do eventually get used to this, and it works really well. And the rate in which you fire is entirely up to how fast you can move your arms. So you very quickly start to feel like Legolas with a sick fascination of getting as close as possible to your downed enemies so you can see the arrow enter their fat face, and I'm totally not a dangerous person. I'll shoot your fucking ankles off. The weirdest part of the whole game is walking through a room being damaged by every inanimate object you bump into and hearing yourself scream in anguish. Walk into some bones. <laughs> Walk into a corpse. <laughs> and when I bump into a cauldron, the fucking universe ends around me. Why does this keep happening? Seriously, put a cauldron on someone's head and it's the funniest goddamn part of the game. Put it on your own head though. <laughs> you think they would have playtested this and made your character immune to cauldrons, but I guess that would have ruined the ending battle where a hundred Nords face off against 3,000 cauldrons. Get ready, man! Leveling up is like threading a cat through a fucking chimney. It's time. Leveling up in the original game was hard enough because the cursor would just select whatever perk it felt like, but here, fuck me, using a touchpad to swipe between the choices of 60 degrees and 80 degrees simply is not going to work and is no way to live. Please kill me. <laughs> Picking up objects in the world works as great as usual. You can pick up most things and even wave around these web-covered corpses. The bottom line here is that porting Skyrim into VR has improved it quite substantially overall, in most ways. If this game came out now for the first time and it was in VR with the lighting, skin and sound mods included, I would probably be extremely happy. As I said, graphically it's aged really well. The 
biggest problem with it is that we've all played Skyrim so much already. I have a master's degree in chemistry, but I still know my way around the College of fucking Winterhold better than any NMR spectrogram. A way around this is to approach the game as differently as possible to any previous playthroughs of the game. I decided my character hates Nords, so is evil in most situations. Has a family in Falkreath, so I went there first. I can't say those words together. Has a family in Falkreath, so I went there first. And had heard that I could become a better assassin slash thief in solitude, so I was working towards getting there. I chose this because I'm yet to be evil in a playthrough, and I never saw these locations first time round, partly because my game kept crashing whenever I went near solitude for some reason. No oh, fuck it! I mean, this game is huge. There's loads I haven't even touched, but I can still actually have quite a good time and see plenty that I haven't seen before. You worked it out! I love my home! I love my home! I love my home! Uh...